All right, we are back here in beautiful sunny Florida after a long, much needed two week va two week vacation. Happy to be home. Um, you know, ready to get back into the regular swing of things. I've been act inactive on Twitter. Um, haven't had much to say. My uh, UFC 205 breakdown was a little late, but I got it up. Um, it was a good vacation. Treated me well. Um, you know, I hit 50 subscribers while on vacation. I hit 400 Twitter followers. Um, I made two units on UFC 205. I made one unit on uh, Fight Night Dos Anjos Ferguson. So, um, good stuff, man. Good stuff. So, uh, you can always follow me on Twitter if you want to keep track of my bets at MMA Kelton. Um, Sam Allen Capertech, if you want to uh, check out my betting record, MMA Kelton. Um, you know, subscribe to the channel and uh, keep following what I'm doing, man, because uh, I'm having a hell of a time doing this, and it's only going to get better from here. But let's get down to breaking down this card, UFC Fight Night 99, Musasi vs. Hall 2 in Belfast, Ireland. So I'm actually going to be recording my uh, UFC Fight Night 100 video right after this. I'm going to upload them right at the same time. So as soon as you're done watching this, go check that out. They're both going to be well worth watching. So let's get into it, man. The first fight of the night, Abdul Razak Al-Hassan, minus 350, taking on Charlie Ward, plus 2. 260. So, um, I'm a huge fan of Al Hassan, man, and I have been for a while. You know, this kid is absolutely legit. He's a, uh, he's a judo world champion, um, and he's, he's 7 and 0 in MMA right now, and he hasn't even been using his judo. He's been out there KOing everybody in under a minute and a half with his lethal, lethal striking and his excellent movement. I, this dude knows how to pick his shots. It's really a, quite amazing how um, a judo champion turned out to be such an amazing striker. Uh, it's like he was just born for this. Um, you, you know, I really think that he is a clear cut, um, just amazing prospect and I do see him being a contender in the future um, if you watch my legacy breakdown a few weeks ago he was on that card I had nothing but good things to say about him he went out and destroyed his opponent in a minute but uh, you know Charlie Ward he uh, he's got the home country advantage here he's also making his UFC debut uh, you know he's only three and one I'm not really sure if he's UFC ready he he does have good boxing and he, he's decently well-rounded but I just don't think he's going to have anything for Al Hassan here. I mean, uh, I, I think Al Hassan is just going to pick him apart on the feet and KO him early, man. Uh, Charlie Ward, you know, he, he could be a good prospect in the future, you know. Um, he's got good skills. I just don't think... Uh, I don't think he's going to have anything for Al Hassan on the feet. I think Al Hassan's just going to hit him with a big shot early and KO him, or he's just going to hit him with a big shot early and Ward's just never going to get his feet under him, and it's just going to be all Al Hassan from there. But my official pick is Abdul Razak Al Hassan via round one KO. And when it comes to betting, it's tough to bet on a guy making his UFC debut at minus 350. But just me personally, since I'm so high on the guy, I do have him in one parlay. I have him in a 1.5 unit parlay of him and Zach Cummings. So uh, moving on, another matchup of... Uh, Two debutants here. We got Brett Johns, minus 220, taking on Quan Ho Kwok, plus 180. So this is a good fight here, man. Uh, two undefeated fighters. Uh, both guys have a lot of 25-minute experience. Uh, they also have experience over former UFC fighters. Uh, but really, I I'm honestly more impressed with Brett Johns here uh, when it comes to his run on the regionals compared to uh, Kwok's run. Uh, Brett Johns, I think he's, uh, he's a lot more well-rounded and... Uh, I see a lot more improvement of him after every single fight. You know, Quan is a good striker, but Johns is just good everywhere, especially with his wrestling and submissions, and I think that's what's going to do it for him. I like Brett Johns here. Um, I think the first round is going to be a little bit of a striking match. Uh, maybe the end of the first, Brett Johns starts uh, utilizing takedowns, and he's going to see how relatively easy it is. And in that second round, I like Brett Johns to uh, wrestle Quok down and submit him. So my official pick is... Is Brett Johns via a second round submission. So moving on, women's bout here. We got Marion Renault minus 220 taking on Milana Dugieva plus 180. So I'm having a hard time like getting a good read on this fight. I'm not really sure how it's going to play out. Um, I, I think uh, Marion Renault is a little, little too much of a favorite there. I 
tend to disagree with minus 220. Um, I'd happily take Milana Dugieva at plus uh, 180 if she was just a little more active, though, man. Uh, she's super inactive. She's been in the UFC for like three years. She's only had two fights. First fight, she uh, got a split decision win over Elizabeth Phillips in a very, very lackluster fight. And then uh, her second uh, fight, the, her last fight was against uh, Juliana Pena. And Juliana Pena absolutely smashed her, like badly. One of the worst beatings I've seen in women's MMA. But, uh, man, I, I, you know, I'm not opposed to um, someone putting money on Juji Ava here. I, I just don't like to bet on inactive fighters. But uh, I am gonna. I think Renault should be somewhere around minus 140, minus 150. Uh, I am gonna go with Marion Renault. I think uh, even at her age, at uh, 39, I do think she's uh, very tough, well-rounded. She's uh, she fights younger than she actually is. She she's a good fighter. I mean, one does not simply submit Jessica Andrade. I mean, I know that wasn't Jessica Andrade's real weight class, but Marion Renault is no joke. She has some serious skills and. Dujieva, I think she'll be able to make it close, but ultimately, I think Renault's just a step above. So my official pick is Marion Renault to outstrike and outgrapple Dujieva to a 30-27 decision here. But when it comes to betting, it is a clear pass for me. Next up, we got Zach Cummings minus 170 taking on Alexander Yakovlev, my uh, plus 150. So. This is an interesting fight. Um, my gut, I had a hard read on it for, at first, but after watching like their, each of their last like three fights, my gut is really telling me Zach Cummings for some reason. And I don't know, man. I just feel like Zach Cummings, I think he's going to be able to, uh, similar to the Abdul Razak Al Hassan fight, I think Zach Cummings is going to hit big, uh, Yakovlev with a big shot early and either knock him out or... Just make it so Yakovlev never gets his feet under him and never gets comfortable, and it's all Cummings from there. Uh, you know, Yakovlev, he, uh, another thing to consider, he, he got demolished by, uh, by wrestling in his last fight by, uh, Kamaru Usman. I mean, Zach Cummings doesn't have the wrestling that Usman has, but Zach Cummings is a very good wrestler, and I can see that being a factor if, uh, Yakovlev really um does take control of the striking and i'm not saying zach cummings is just going to completely own the striking yakovlev could uh have some success there but um just knowing that zach cummings has a pretty good sized wrestling advantage there that makes me pretty comfortable that uh zach cummings is going to get the job done here uh, if he can't uh find his footing in the striking i do think he has that wrestling as a very good backup plan and uh it's a, a KO early would not surprise me for Zach Cummings, but my official pick is going to be Zach Cummings via a 30-27 decision. So next up, a couple heavyweights. We got Justin Ledette, minus 150, taking on Mark Godbeer, plus 130. Mark Godbeer, possibly one of the best nicknames in MMA. Mark, the hand of Godbeer. I just like that. It makes me laugh every time I read it, but... um. No, I'm a fan of both these guys, man. Justin Ledette, um, obviously his last performance, he showed off uh, what crisp and great boxing he has. Uh, you know, Chase Sherman, he's not the best of fighters. He was kind of like target practice there, and Chase Sherman was even having some success. But uh, Mark Godbeer, he, he's very impressive too. Both of these guys, maybe uh, two of the fastest heavyweights you'll see on the roster. Both these guys are very fast. Uh, good movement, um, Godbeer, he showed very good cardio, and so did Justin Ledette, uh, Justin Ledette slowed down a little bit, but, um, it was, it was kind of a high pa high paced fight with Chase Sherman, but, you know, Justin Ledette, he's got good, uh, boxing, and I wouldn't be surprised if he just jabbed Godbeer up for three rounds, but, you know, I, I think if he gets a little too comfortable, I think Godbeer can catch him here, and I, I think that's very likely. I like Mark Godbeer a lot. He's got big power. Like I said, Chris Boxing, fast. He, he's a great heavyweight, man. Um, big guy. Both these guys are pretty big, 6'4". Um, you know, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with Mark Godbeer here. I think uh, is it Justin Ledette, he'll have some success in the first round with the jabs. I think the second he gets a little bit comfortable, uh, I think Mark Godbeer is going to catch him. And I'm going to go with Mark Godbeer via second round KO. I just think he's got too much power in the hands, and uh, he's going to find Ledette's chin. Uh, Mark Godbeer, he's got the uh, European advantage. I know he's not from Ireland, but uh, that is his uh, continent. He doesn't have to travel as far as Ledette. The crowd's going to be behind him. 
Um, when it comes to betting, uh, I don't like to bet on low-level heavyweight fights. Maybe if Mar Mark Godbeer was uh, a little bit more of an underdog, I'd take the shot, but at plus 130, it really isn't enough for me. But he is the pick. So next up, we got Anna Elmos, plus 110, taking on Amanda Cooper, minus 130. Interesting, man. Um, Anna Elmos opened up at like a minus 160, and here she is down to a plus 110, and... Uh, I gotta say, man, I completely disagree with that. I love Anna Elmos here. Uh, she is she's a savage, man. Uh, for her to take a short notice fight at at 135, which is pretty much what she walks around at, against one of the best female strikers in the entire world, in Jermaine Durandamy, and go out and actually strike with Jermaine, it just shows what a beast and what heart and confidence she has. Um, Amanda Cooper, she's tough and has sneaky jujitsu, but that's really about it, man. I'm not impressed with the one and two fighter and Amanda Cooper at all. Um, I know she had some wins on the Ultimate Fighter, but her her professional record is one and two, and I do think that uh, tells a lot here. Um, I don't think Anna Elmos is some kind of world beater, but she does have a very big striking advantage here, in my opinion. And I also think that she will be able to stuff most of the takedowns from uh, Amanda Cooper here, and uh, you know, based on all the things I'm saying here i do like uh i do like anna elmos to put on a striking clinic on amanda cooper and my pick is anna elmos via a second round tko and i do have one unit on anna elmos at plus 110 so uh moving on here really really fun fight um probably one of the five or ten best fights of this week um Kevin Lee, minus 110, taking on Magomed Mustafaev, minus 110. So, got pick em odds here, and uh, rightly so. Uh, <laughs> striker versus wrestler, two prospects, all the making for fireworks. Um, Magomed Mustafaev, uh, he's a very, very good striker. Um, I I think he's going to just be susceptible to... Um, Suspecial <laughs> Sorry, stumbling over my words, but I do think uh, Kevin Lee is going to uh, have relative ease taking him down here, but the thing is, fights don't start on the ground. Uh, fights start on the feet, and I like Magomed Must Mustafaev to kind of eat Kevin Lee up on the feet there. Uh, you know, a lot of I see a lot of people saying that uh, Kevin Lee, he got KO'd by Leo Santos, so it should be an easy KO for Magomed, but... You know, those people could possibly be right, but I'm not putting any stock into that. You know, Leo was a veteran that capitalized on Kevin Lee, uh, Kevin Lee's mistake, and I, I think Kevin Lee learned from those mistakes, and he's going to stay away from Magomed's power shots, and I, I like Kevin Lee to uh, wrestle Must Mustafaev down and, you know, tire him out, beat him up on the ground, and I am going to go with Kevin Lee via a third round submission. Um... You know, obviously, uh, Mustafi of KO wouldn't surprise me in the least bit here. Like I said, the uh, pick em odds are absolutely warranted. But I am going to go with Kevin Lee third round submission. Um, I'm very impressed with his wrestling. I'm very impressed with his athleticism. Um, I, I just think he's the uh, better fighter here, and I think he's going to be able to uh, expose Mustafi of his uh, takedown defense game and. Kevin Lee is my pick, but uh, no bets. Uh, just, just at even odds. It's such a close fight. Nothing's really worth it to me here. Um, I could see this fight going three rounds. I could see it going a minute. But uh, moving on here, um, another just amazing fight here, buried in the prelims. Uh, Kyoji Horiguchi minus 175, taking on Ali Baga Utinov plus 155. Um, so this fight is uh, much closer than the odds indicate to me. Um, it's just a very close fight. Uh, amazing fight. Uh, two top eight, maybe even top five flyweights in the world. Um, I'm expecting some really high-level back-and-forth action. I think it's going to come down to... Uh, uh, Horiguchi striking versus uh, Bagotinov's wrestling, and who can really make it their fight? Um, but the thing is, in my opinion, um, Ali Bagotinov's striking can absolutely hang with the Horiguchi's striking. Um, 
Uh, obviously, I think Horiguchi has the advantage in the striking, but he can. Bagatinov can absolutely hang there. What worries me is uh, I'm not entirely convinced Horiguchi can uh, hang with uh, Bagarutinov's wrestling. Uh, I think Bagarutinov has a very good chance to win at least two out of the three rounds by his wrestling and. You know, man, uh, I I'm going to go with Ali Bagotinov here. Uh, I've been, uh, I've had him, like, my, my gut has told me Bagotinov. I mean, this fight was supposed to be on the Manila card. This fight has been announced for, like, what, five months now? It seems like it's been forever. I've been waiting for this fight forever. And uh, I've been with Bagotinov the entire time. And I really like Horiguchi, which shows a lot. Um, Bagotinov is just an amazing fighter. Just... I think uh, his wrestling is going to be too much for Horiguchi here, and uh, I'm going to go with Bagotina via a 29-28 decision, and obviously, based on the odds, he's plus 155 right now. I got him at plus 170. I put 1.5 units on Bagotina. But uh, moving on, another good, good fight, man. Uh, Jack Marshman, plus 185, the newcomer, taking on Magnus Seedenblad, minus 225. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of Magnus Edenblad. Uh It's just, it's very unfortunate how inactive he is. Um, also, just how much he's aging. He, I believe he's like 34, 35 years old. Could be wrong, but I believe that's how old he is. Um, and when this fight was first announced and I saw that he was fighting uh, some uh, newcomer that um, I've heard his name a couple times, but I wasn't completely familiar with him, uh, you know, I was all about uh, Magnus Seedenblad. I thought, uh, wow, they're giving him another can to beat up on. I wish they would just rise, keep him going, rising the ranks. But, man, Jack Marshman is no joke, guys. Uh, Jack Marshman is a beast of a boxer, and he has amazing takedown defense. I think, uh, you know, Magnus Seedenblad, obviously, he has the size and reach advantage, and uh, I think he could have some success with his reach early, but... Man, that tall man defense against Jack Marshman's amazing boxing. Uh, I have a hard time believing that Jack Marshman won't find Magnus's chin. Um, Magnus, I can't really recall um, if he's been rocked hard in the past, but uh, man, I think Jack Marshman might be the hardest hitting guy that he's fought. Um, he fought, uh, Seedenblad fought Kristoff Jocko. I think Jocko's a lot better now than he was back then, but Jack Marshman's no joke, man, and I think he has a big speed advantage here, big power advantage. Um, I do think this fight's gonna play out on the feet. Um, I think Seedenblad's gonna look to get it on the ground, but I think Marshman's gonna be able to uh, defend the takedowns for the most part, and I like Jack to crack Magnus on the feet and knock him out. I'm gonna go with Jack Marshman for the upset, round one, K.O. And I do have one unit on Jack Marshman at plus 180. So moving on, man. Uh, first fight in the main card, we got Ian McCall, minus 335. I'm sorry, this isn't on the main card. This is the last fight of the prelims. Uh, sh this fight should be on the main card, though. Ian McCall, minus 335, taking on Neil Seary, plus 275. Neil Seary's retirement fight, man. Um, also, just a really fun stylistical matchup. Uh... I like, uh, I think Neil Siri in his retirement fight, he's kind of a crazy man, even when he's not fighting in his retirement fight, he fights kind of like a, kind of like a crazy guy, and I, I think he's just going to go all out there and use all his tools and do everything in his power to stop Ian McCall, but the thing is, Ian McCall is world class, and I think he's going to have a hard time putting Ian McCall away, I think Ian McCall is just the better fighter and has more left in him in his career um despite ian mccall and haven't fighting in what almost two years now and all these cancellations of his fights uh man i like ian mccall here a lot uh, i just think he, he really has the advantage everywhere um I think uh, the boxing exchanges could be close, but I think Ian McCall is going to be able to utilize takedowns as well. And my official pick is Ian McCall via a 30-27 decision. Um, when it comes to the line, though, with betting, uh, I, I just think well, minus 335 is a little much to pay for Ian McCall based on uh, his layoff and 
also Neil Seary's last fight, um, also in Ireland. That's a wild card, man. And I thought about taking a half unit shot in Neil Seary, but I, I just can't do it. I, I can't do it. But I do like uh, Ian McCall via decision. So now moving on to the main card here, we got Teruto Ishihara on minus 250, taking on Artem Lobov plus 210. Um, I like Ishihara a lot here. Um, just this is a really fun fight, and I think that's going to play into uh, Ichihara. He's kind of a madman. Um, I, I really like uh, his speed, his aggressiveness, his athleticism. You know, Arnhem, he, he's a 12 and 12 fighter. Uh, he's really in the only. He's really only in the UFC because uh, because of McGregor and uh, Arnhem. He had two really disappointing performances, and then his only one win was against uh, another fighter who shouldn't be in the UFC. Um, another guy who was only in the UFC because of his training partner. Um, you know, Arnhem, he does have the uh, experience advantage and he does have big power so it's no lock for Ishihara but uh, I like Ishihara to go out very aggressively and I think he's going to take Lobov out in the first round I think he's going to hit him with a big shot and then choke him out on the ground so Teruto Ishihara via round one submission is the pick and I do have the under in that fight but uh, moving on, we got Alexander Volkov making his UFC debut, plus 110, taking on Timothy Johnson, minus 130. Um, I'm a big fan of Timothy Johnson. He's a super solid heavyweight. Um, I don't think he'll ever be champ or even come close, but I think he can. Uh, I think he can beat a lot of good guys. Uh, you know, Volkov, he's an excellent striker, but he has shown lack of takedown defense in the past. Uh, obviously, he could hit Johnson with a big shot, but Johnson has showed a good chin. Uh, unless Volkov can somehow stuff all the takedowns, keep distance, and outstrike Johnson for three rounds, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be a very good night for Alexander Volkov. I think he's going to get swarmed on and taken down and beaten up for three rounds. I do like... Timothy Johnson via a 30-27 decision. And I haven't made a bet on this fight yet. I'm thinking about Timothy Johnson. I feel like minus 130 is a little worth it. But, you know, I don't know. I don't want to... I like to stay away from uh, low-level heavyweight fights. And Even though I am pretty confident on Tim Johnson, I do think I'm going to stay away there. But uh, I wouldn't blame you for... Uh, Betting on Timothy Johnson. But moving on to the co-main event here, Ross Pearson, minus 125, taking on Stevie Ray, plus 105. So this is a super close matchup, a uh, fun matchup of two strikers. Um, you know, Pearson, he seems to be in the decline uh, on the backstage of his career, but he still picks up solid wins over uh, good young fighters like uh, Paul Felder and Chad Laprise. And, you know, Stevie, he's coming off his uh, first UFC loss. Um, he, he got grinded out by uh, Alan Patrick and... Obviously, Pearson is going to be able to out-wrestle him like Patrick did, but I, I do think uh, Ross Pearson, with his experience and his, sh his sharp boxing, uh, I think he's going to be able to outstrike Stevie. Um, obviously, I think this is going to be a very close fight. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this fight's going to obviously be a split decision just based on how close it's going to be, but... I think uh, I think Ross Pearson's going to be the more active and the more uh, he's going to be throwing the more punches and uh, that's what judges like, man. I think Ross Pearson throwing the more uh, shots. Stevie Ray, I think he's going to be more looking for the big shot to knock Pearson out, and that absolutely could happen. But I'm going to go with Ross Pearson via a 29-28 decision here. But I would stay away from this fight as well. So I'm finally moving on to the co-main event here of this 14 fight card. We got Gegard Mousasi minus 5. 50, take on Uriah Hall plus 425. So, um, rematch of a uh, really, really huge upset last year. Probably the biggest upset of the year last year, aside from uh, Rousey Holm. But uh, obviously, looking at that last fight, Gegard Mousasi is clearly the better fighter, and he got caught. And, um, you know, it could happen again, but it's ridiculously unlikely that Lightning strikes twice here. Um, especially since Gegard is just on fire right now, and Uriah has lost two straight, and his last win was the Gegard fight. Um, I like Gegard to uh, avoid the vicious strikes. I think he figured Uriah Hall out, even though he got knocked out. Um, he's going to take it to the ground, he's going to beat up Uriah Hall, and eventually get the tap with his much more superior ground game. I do like Gegard Gegard Musasi via a second round submission. So uh, I'm going to read my bets here for this card. I do have some plays on Gegard Musasi, but um, for the uh, two combined cards this week, um, I do have a total of eight. 
15 plays. It's going to be my biggest weekend ever, guys. So, um, plays for this card. I got one unit Jack Marshman, um, plus 180. I got uh, one unit Anna Elmos, plus 110. I got uh, 1.5 units on Bagotinov to win uh, 2.6. I got uh, one unit on the Ishihara Lobov under to win 1.3. I got two units on Musasi Hall, doesn't go the distance to win one unit. I got um, I got a parlay uh, that includes uh, fighters of both cards. I got one unit on Musasi in the distance paired with Claudia Gedalia. I got uh, 1.1 units on a parlay of Gegard Musasi and Michael Chandler from the Bellator card. And then I got 1.5 units on Razak, or Abdul Razak El Hassan and Zach Cummings to win 1.7 units. So uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. Um, pretty long breakdown. It is what it is. But I'm going to get out of here. Follow me on Twitter. Enjoy the fights. Thank you.